This is the horrifying story of an orca attack on Ken Peters, as he was almost drowned by the animal in front of a packed audience at SeaWorld. But far more horrifying is the story of how the orca, a female named Kasatka, came to be at SeaWorld. Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. The market for captive killer whales began in 1965, when owner of Seattle Marine Aquarium, Ted Griffin, captured a wild killer whale and put her on display at the aquarium. It was the best investment he had ever made, and the incredible animal brought in thousands of dollars as everyone wanted to witness it close up. Although she only survived a year in captivity, it was the start of something big. Ted knew how successful he would be if he would capture killer whales and supply marine parks and aquariums with them across the world. However, his methods for capture were brutal. Using explosions to disperse the family pod and separate the juveniles from the others, he would then swoop in with giant nets and tow the captives hundreds of miles back to shore. Often, the family would follow the boat the entire way, trying desperately to free the youngster from the nets. From the boat, the crew could hear the desperate cries and screams from the whales under the water. Killer whales, otherwise known as orcas, are incredibly intelligent animals. They are toothed whales and are the largest members of the dolphin family. They have a highly complex social structure, and they stay with their mothers their entire lives, making them an incredibly tight-knit family group or pod. In the wild, they can live 80 years or more and so a single pod can be made up of as many as four generations of orcas. They interact with individuals from other pods and some form friendships with them. Depending on their geographical location, orcas have different dialects when they communicate and are unlikely to socialize with those with a different dialect. They are known to care for one another too. They have been observed helping sick or injured individuals to stay near the surface so they can breathe if they are otherwise struggling. Due to their intelligence and tight family bonds, it's thought that keeping orcas in captivity is the ultimate in animal cruelty. Nowadays, orcas are captive bred, meaning that none are taken from the wild anymore. However, there are still some alive in captivity that were caught in the wild and torn from their families in the most brutal way imaginable. One of those orcas was Kasatka. She was captured off the coast of Iceland and transported to San Diego SeaWorld in 1978, but she had an aggressive streak, and who could blame her? Other orcas who had been ripped from their families and made to perform in front of crowds have shown similar signs of aggression. Being confined to tiny pools with concrete sides and little room to exhibit natural behavior would send anything or anybody into despair. With little stimulation, captive orcas can develop psychosis and can become extremely dangerous. Whistleblowers over the years have revealed the treatment these majestic animals have been subjected to. There are stories of them being drugged to keep them subdued and calm, and there has often been overuse of antibiotics because they do not cope well in captive conditions. 39-year-old Ken Peters had worked as a trainer at SeaWorld for years. He was used to the shows and displays that were expected of him and his killer whales. He deeply respected the animals he worked with. He had a passion for them and loved his job. Getting to work with these incredible whales was a dream come true for him. But Kasatka had shown signs of aggression towards him before. She had bitten him in 1993 and again in 1999. Despite this, they had a long history of working together and Ken trusted her. One of the highlights of his show was balancing on top of Kasatka's nose as she swam around the pool with him. But one day, this circus stunt almost turned deadly. On November 30th, 2006, Ken dove into the water during the show. The crowd was on the edge of their seats as they waited for Ken to resurface. They could see the dark shadow of the killer whale beneath the water as it made its way toward the surface towards where Ken was treading water. It was a routine they had done thousands of times before. It was well rehearsed. He waited for the nudge of her nose on his feet, but it never came. Instead, he felt a sharp tug on his foot and she pulled him underwater. He managed a quick intake of breath. There was a commotion as she thrashed her head from side to side and Ken disappeared from sight. The crowd gasped as they realized something was wrong. 
Then staff spotters on the side of the pool rushed towards the water. They slapped the surface, trying to distract Kasatka, but it wasn't working. They shouted her recall commands, but she didn't listen. She dragged Ken to the bottom of the pool. He could feel the pressure in his ears. He could feel his lungs about to burst as she held him underwater. He tried to stay calm. He tried to pull his foot free, but she held him tightly. He could feel her sharp teeth digging into his foot. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't release her grip. One minute later, Kasatka headed for the surface. Ken gasped for air. He took deep breaths, but he wasn't out of the water yet. She still had his foot firmly in her mouth. She hadn't finished with him. He stroked her gently, talking softly to her. He knew his life was literally in her mouth. If she wanted to kill him, then she could have easily. He was no match for the 5,000-pound, 2,200-kilogram killer whale. There was nothing he could do except brace himself for what was to come and hope she let him go. She didn't. A few seconds later, she dived underwater again, pulling Ken with her. He was completely at the mercy of the whale as she tossed him about below the surface. He was her plaything. She pulled him along as though he was a rag doll. But something had agitated her, something that had caused her change in behavior. Whilst underwater, Ken heard Kasatka's calf calling from the other side of the concrete. It was no wonder she was acting out. It was incredibly distressing for her, and she wanted to be with her calf. Even at the bottom of the pool, Ken truly believed that Kasatka would let him go. He didn't think she would drown him. He had faith in her. Staff at the pool side lowered a net into the water. When Kasatka resurfaced again, Ken spoke calmly with her once more. She released her grip on his foot and swam over the net. It was pulled upwards, creating a barrier between her and Ken. He made a mad dash for the other side of the pool, swimming as fast as he could in case she came back for him. He pulled himself out onto the concrete side and hobbled away. The only injuries he sustained were to his foot. It had puncture wounds from her teeth and had been broken. SeaWorld was criticized for their handling of the situation and the way in which their orcas are treated. They should have foreseen the anxiousness of Kasatka with her calf so close by, and they should never have put her on display in that condition. The attack once again called for a ban on orca shows in captivity. We have learned all we can learn from them in captivity. Now let's learn from them in their natural environment. Kasatka died at 41 years old on 15 August 2017. She was put down due to a persistent lung infection which was likely caused by an impaired immune system from all the antibiotics she had been given over the years. She was the oldest orca in captivity at the time, and since her death, SeaWorld has vowed to only display their killer whales in natural shows. These aim to show their natural behavior rather than the likes of jumping through hoops and splashing members of the crowd. It's a step in the right direction, but is it enough?